Hi guys, my name's Alexander. I have a terrible case for you, so listen up. On New Year's Eve, a dinner was held to celebrate a holiday in the quiet and beautiful coastal town of Cahasset, located 22 miles southeast of Boston. It was a standard New Year's Eve party. They ate, toasted and celebrated. But behind the rosy appearance of an educated, wealthy, happy couple, there was tension. The husband had a questionable past with psychological problems, criminal activity and threats of violence. Meanwhile, his vivacious, intelligent and successful wife, the mother of their children, was thriving in her career. This success may well have angered her partner. The investigation is ongoing, but much has already become known. Warning signs, revelations from family friends, shocking details and potentially damning evidence. Native of Serbia, Anna Walsh met her future husband Brian in 2008 at a hotel in Lynx, where she worked as a reservations manager. At the time, Anna was married to her first husband, Mark Knipp. They divorced a few years later, in 2014. Anna made a successful career in the hotel business. Although she studied French and literature, she obtained a master's certificate in hotel management and held several director-level positions in large hotel companies. By early 2022, Anna received the position of director of operations at Tishman Spur in Washington. She has also moved forward in her personal life marrying Brian Walsh in 2015 and giving birth to three boys. Anna was the main breadwinner of the family. Brian was given the opportunity to study at excellent universities. But although he was successful in life, he had some problems with the law. In 2022, Brian was forced to plead guilty to charges related to a series of fraudulent practices involving the sale of counterfeit works of art. While under house arrest, Brian was confined to the family home with limited functional travel permissions to take his children to school and run errands. Anna was always on the move, dividing her time between her family home in Massachusetts and a second home she recently purchased in the District of Columbia. Anna flew off and was adored by both friends and colleagues. She's just so attractive. She makes their room brighter. She is so passionate, funny and cheerful. In fact, this is just a person with whom you want to immediately get to know each other better. And she's so interested in everyone and everything. And is just a truly beautiful, wonderful and joyful woman. Her acquaintances said about her. Mark joined the Walshes to wish them a happy new year. According to Brian, the next morning, January 1, Anna got ready, kissed him goodbye and told him to go back to bed. She usually took a taxi to the airport and left between 6 and 7 a.m. Anna booked a flight to Washington, D.C. to return to work a couple of days later on January 3rd. Brian said that when she woke him up on January 1, she said she had an emergency at work that required her to fly out earlier than originally planned. However, she never showed up at the airport that morning. She also did not board the original flight on January 3. On Wednesday, January 4, her employer in Washington, D.C. contacted Massachusetts police to report her missing. Apparently, Brian also applied around the same time. No one has heard anything from Anna since the early morning of 1st of January. Brian Walsh also called his wife's friends. Perhaps some of them had heard something about her. On January 5, the police department asked the public for any potentially helpful information or whether the 35-year-old mother had been seen. It was reported that she drove from her home in Cohasset to Logan Airport to board a plane to Reagan International Airport in Washington. Police later confirmed that there was no evidence to indicate that Anna drove the car to the airport. Local taxi companies had no record of picking her up at her address, and no driver reported an official ride. The CCTV system in the house was also reportedly checked. There was no sign that Anna was leaving 6 and January 7. Law enforcement agencies organized the combing of the forest. About a kilometer and a half from Anna's house, the area was combed for any traces of what might have happened. 
Officials said the 20 soldiers from the specialized search team were joined by three teams of police dog handlers and a police helicopter. State police drivers also searched the creek and drained the home's swimming pool. But after two full days, state police announced that they had found nothing during those days of searching. After an exhaustive search in the forest, they found no clues. On the day of Anna's disappearance, January 1, life in the Walsh house, according to Brian, went on as usual. The nanny arrived in the afternoon around 3 o'clock. Brian left the house to buy groceries and then visit his mother in his village, which was about an hour away. It is curious that on the day Brian left the house, he did not have a mobile phone. He said he lost it in the night before. Brian got lost without a GPS. This meant that he left the house much later that day than he had intended. Brian told police he left his mother's house about 15 minutes after arriving to run an errand for her to go to two stores. After he did his shopping, Brian disappeared for a while, about 30 minutes. He finally returned home in the Cohasset around 8 p.m. It took investigators several days to track and confirm Brian's movements, including his travel and hours of video surveillance in stores, to confirm his presence there. Brian Walsh did not appear on camera of any of the stores. Brian's confidently chosen routes on the first day on his wife's disappearance were a lie. With evidence of Brian's deceit in hand, the police were able to arrest him on charges of misleading investigators. On the eighth day after Anna's disappearance, a vacation was taken from the family home. Initially with Brian's consent, and items were seized. Officers loaded the Volvo SUV into the back of the truck while others searched the area of the home. Unlike the search in the forest, important evidence was found in the house. In the basement, law enforcement officers found blood stains and a bloody knife. With Brian still in custody, police began to retrieve data from his mobile phone. Apparently, they were not completely lost. One of his sons must have taken it during a New Year's party and hid it away, Brian said. He later discovered it under one of the children's pillows. The phone data showed that Brian went to many places that he did not mention, and even places that were not approved according to the terms of his probation. Meanwhile, data from Anna's cell phone showed that he called near their home in Cohasset on January 1, when she was supposed to be in Washington and was in South Korea the next day. He came there for a friend's wedding and decided to stay. While staying with an old friend he met as a student, Brian saw an opportunity to provide him with some help. His friend's family owned a wonderful art collection and they had several pieces they wanted to sell. Brian spoke well, was an educated man and belonged to a wealthy generation. He had key qualities that would be useful in the art world. His friend entrusted him with several works. One was a small Chinese figurine, another was a sketch by Keith Hemming, and the third was a well-known and quite highly valuable painting by Andy Warhol. In 1978, Warhol produced many abstract paintings in various sizes, known as shadows. There were more than a hundred of them in the series. In 2011, Brian was entrusted with two of them. At the time, it was believed that their market value was about a quarter of million US dollars. The second copy was part of a dollar sign. When Warhol created the series, he spoke about his inspiration. Great art means big money. Brian Walsh certainly agreed with this sentiment. Once Brian took possession of the artwork, it was not on behalf of his friend. At that time, in his diary, he wrote down his true intentions by pocketing the money for himself. He wrote, I have a plan for art. I need to get away with a few good jobs. I hope I can handle this. This work will be difficult. Over the next five years, Brian managed to sell Warhol's painting several times. Beginning in 2011, Brian offered both paintings at Christie's in New York. He managed to sell the dollar for about $40,000.
Later that year, he hired a counterfeiter to make several copies of these paintings, claiming that he needed the copies for insurance purposes. He then began selling them as originals, which was later uncovered by an FBI investigation. Brian entered into a contract to sell shadows to an art consultant in Paris for $145,000. By the following year, it was discovered that he had paid another forger to make additional copies of the shadows, providing a set of photographs to work with. This time he did not provide the forger with the originals. Faber suspected that this happened because by that time he had already sold the paintings. Later that year, these paintings also appeared on eBay. Brian put them off for sale for $100,000, claiming they were from his private collection. But this time, he sold them to a California art dealer, a man named Ron Rivlin, who specialized in Warhols. He curated one of the most extensive Andy Warhol collections and was an expert in the field. Ron paid Brian $80,000 for the shadows. After being shown convincing in documents online that proved their authenticity, Brian skillfully used those documents provided by other buyers and potential buyers such as Christian in New York and Jet Gasek Gallery to simulate the paperwork that gave the paintings their proper status. And it worked! At least at the first stage, Ron Rivlin sent his assistant to retrieve the paintings from Brian. They met in the hotel lobby and he treated him to lunch. Everything was absolutely legal. After much searching, Ron managed to get back $30,000 of his $80,000 purchase price, but after that, the scammer could no longer be contacted. The FBI tracked the funds to Brian's credit card. He severed ties with his friend in South Korea and the original artwork was never returned to them. The state argued that Brian was motivated by greed. He wanted to maintain his luxurious lifestyle. For example, after Brian received $145,000 in Paris, credit card receipts show that he and his wife Anna went shopping at Prada art dealer. Strong communication skills, attractive, his obvious wealth, including the address of a house worth several million dollars. He was very calculating, almost a genius in what he did. Brian Walsh probably agreed with another famous Warhol quote. Art is what you can get away with. The FBI concluded that Brian had repeatedly sold counterfeit paintings. A college friend reported that Brian borrowed $500 from him and never paid him back. Another friend said Brian attended fancy, expensive dinners and asked friends to pay for them. Even worse was the protracted legal battle that followed the death of his father, Dr. Thomas Walsh. By the time of his death, in 2018, he was estranged from his son. Walsh Sr. and his son were estranged for years after Brian Walsh absconded with nearly a million dollars from a doctor. Court records also state that because of the alleged theft, Dr. Thomas Walsh was required to continue working past the age at which he wanted to retire. A significant amount of his savings was stolen. He bequeathed to Brian only his best wishes and nothing more from his property. Being left out of his father's will was unacceptable to Brian, who fought for the inheritance by claiming, seemingly without irony, that his father's will had been forged. Court documents from the case described Brian as an angry and violent. Brian was treated at a psychiatric center before he was discharged several years ago. The same family friend who spoke of Brian's anger issues also claimed that the con artist had been officially diagnosed as a sociopath. As Brian got older, he sort of lost track of how people succeed in this world and just put on an angry face. In 2021, Brian pleaded guilty to three federal fraud charges and was placed under house arrest and supervision. While awaiting sentencing in January 2023, he was paroled but kept under house arrest with restrictions on his movement. Brian was given two and a half hours on weekdays from 8 to 10.30 to take his children to school. Monday, January 2 was a day off. The schools were closed, but Brian was nowhere to be seen. Video footage kept at the hardware store showed Brian wearing a black surgical mask and blue surgical gloves that morning the day his wife disappeared. This video has not yet been published. 
However, video footage taken at the bar earlier that morning showed him without protective gloves at a Home Depot store in Auckland, according to police reports. Brian purchased $450 worth of cleaning supplies, including mops, a bucket, a tarp, and various types of tape. He paid in cash. It was two hours before the deadline that was given to Brian to run errands and make purchases. According to the terms of his probation, these assignments were to be completed between 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. But the day after he was last seen with his wife, Brian urgently needed a large quantity of cleaning supplies. He then lied to police about his whereabouts. Investigators checked trash containers at the possible crime scene and near Brian's mother's home. They also searched the garbage collection point. The results of these searches dashed the hopes of Anna's loved ones, who desperately wanted an unlikely but happy solution to the problem of her disappearance. At the property, police found bloody towels and other items similar to those Brian had purchased at Home Depot just days earlier. They also found a hacksaw, torn fabric, blood, an axe, a rug, cleaning supplies and trash bags at the site. Law enforcement officials said their initial intentions were to test members' blood samples for DNA matches. Although Brian Walsh was already in custody in a misleading investigation, he was additionally charged with the murder of his wife. Norfolk's district attorney, Michael Morrissey, made a public statement. Early in this investigation, police had probable cause to believe that Anna's husband, Brian Walsh, 47, misled investigators who were looking into material matters important to search for Anna Walsh. He has pleaded not guilty to these charges and is currently being held at the Norfolk County Correctional Facility. The ongoing investigation allowed police to obtain an arrest warrant for Brian on charges of murdering his wife. The charges were laid out at a preliminary hearing. During that hearing, the public heard for the first time details from data recovered from Brian's elusive cell phone, much of it from his son's iPad. Brian's search story spoke for itself. Indeed, it tells the horrific story of a man who tries to dispose of a body step by step, including a strangely specific search. Search. Ways to get rid of the body of a woman weighing 52 kilograms. On January 1, he found out how long it takes for a body to smell, how to stop the decomposition of a body, how to throw away body parts, what formaldehyde does, how long does DNA last. Is it possible to make identification from the remains, dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body, how to wash blood off a wooden floor, luminal for blood detection, what's better? Should I spray clothes from a crime scene or wash them? On January 2, a lot of requests were also made. Can you be charged with murder without finding a body? Can you identify the body by the broken teeth? During the search for Brian, detectives also gained clues to what had until now remained unclear, his motive. From December 22 to December 27, Brian searched for information about the best state to get a divorce. There were signs that the marriage might be in trouble. Anna's close friend painted a family picture of the Walshes. While Brian stayed at home doing household chores, Anna reportedly asked her mother to visit her from Serbia, a sign that she may have been seeking emotional support. Additional confirmation of this was Anna's presence on social networks. Anna has appeared on social media several times throughout 2022 without her wedding ring. She was last photographed without it two weeks before her disappearance, when she posed with British entrepreneur Paul Watson. She contacted her mother on December 22, Christmas Day. The text read, Please mom, come tomorrow. Her mother rejected her request. There is also reason to suspect that Brian was more interested in a divorce than in remaining her husband. A few days before her disappearance, he searched the internet for information about how long it would take to receive an inheritance. 
She has sold at least four properties worth more than two million dollars. This included two apartments and two houses. Her husband's name is not listed as the owner or co-owner on any of these properties. Massachusetts authorities believe that Brian wanted to end the marriage and preserve his wife's fortune. The state's case against Brian Walsh for murdering his wife appears strong despite search teams' unsuccessful attempts to find the body. Nearly 10 years before Anna Walsh went missing, she made a police report about the man who would later become her husband. She reported that he threatened to kill her and her friend. Anna then reported this death threat back in 2014, telling police that Brian had threatened her over the phone that he was going to kill them both. The case was later closed when Anna refused to cooperate with the investigation. The following year, she married Brian and they had three children. Apparently, in one of her last messages, Anna left a note to her husband on a champagne box that apparently was left unopened after a New Year's party. On the last night she was seen alive, Anna wrote, Wow, 2022, what a year! Today we create our own lives. Show courage, love, perseverance, compassion and joy. Love is an honor. The couple's three children are said to be in the custody of the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families. But several local families also offered to take them in, so they could stay together. The search for Anna Walsh continues. Walsh continues. Walsh continues.